These are radioluminescent turn bank indicators. And I find these particularly interesting because they're fairly radioactive. The reason why they are radioactive is because they have radium inside of them. Radium is a radioactive element, and when it's added to zinc sulfide and applied as a paint, you get the effect that you're seeing right now. But over time, the radiation will break down the zinc sulfide crystals and cause it to dim, so only through long exposure photography, like in this time lapse, can the glow still be seen. Now let's talk a little bit about how these were found and how radioactive they are. It's a little harder to find some of this stuff uh, online to know exactly what you're buying because pictures can be kind of misleading. Like you can look at something and be like, okay, this paint looks like it might be radium or, or might not be radium. Uh, you know, if people are looking to avoid buying uh, radioactive stuff like this, uh, it can be kind of hard if you're getting certain parts from a certain time era. So we'll look at these uh, turn bank indicators and see how radioactive they are. I went and, uh, you know, got some footage of me getting it uh, out of the um, mailbox and, you know, I could detect radiation through the mailbox of the gauges, so I know that they are radioactive. I bought three of them because I didn't know for sure, uh, looking at pictures online, uh, if these were actually gonna be uh, painted with radium because uh, there's like, you know, you kind of get a sense of, you know, if a dial has like a certain uh, color to the paint that it will be radium, but sometimes I've gotten others where I thought they were gonna be radioactive and they weren't. And so uh, here's the first one. Uh, and so this is a, a turn bank indicator. And so if you look at it here, you can see that there's like a bubble level in there. And it tells you like, you know, like if the aircraft is level and then like if it's going this way or whatever. But this right here is all radium and then also on this indicator. And so this is pretty radioactive. And to show you how radioactive it is, I got my Geiger counter here. So I'm gonna turn the clicker on. So now you can hear it. So right now I'm getting around, uh, you know, 95, 98,000 counts per minute. And that's uh, considerably radioactive. Uh, normal background here in Montana is around 35 counts per minute. And so this is the first one I got here. Uh, it looks like, um, you know, hard to tell what the date is uh, for this one because it really doesn't have that. It has like a serial number on it and looks like it was made by Pioneer. And, um, they're common like avionics uh, manufacturer. And so this is the first one I got, and this is the second one. And so this one's a little smaller. It doesn't have like this big back like this one does. And so uh, it's just a little bit different, but it's still radioactive. And this one's giving me around, uh, you know, 45, um, 46,000 counts per minute. And that's about half the activity of the other one. And so they probably used a uh, less radium paint than this one here. Uh, usually the different formulas, like the different mixtures of radium paint was kind of depending on uh, the manufacturer um, and the, the year that it was manufactured too. I usually find that the gauges that are made uh, earlier, like, um, you know, like in the 40s and the 30s and stuff like that, those tend to be doped with a higher amount of radium than uh, more current ones because they were using radium uh, in aircraft gauges uh, starting, I believe, in the 1930s, and then it went all the way up into the late 60s into the early 70s, and then they phased uh, using uh, radium paint uh, in these aircraft dials. But they still can be found because there was like thousands and thousands of them made, um, and then service too, because they'd have to change them out and put a new one in there. So there's lots of them. And so this is the... The last one I got, uh, this one actually has a service tag on it that says uh, June 19th, uh, 1944. Uh, so if that's correct, that's pretty cool that this uh, came with this uh, 
um, gauge and I'll uh, have a close up shot of this so people can like look at it and see who uh, changed it out and stuff like that and the information that they would put on a card like this. Uh, but this one is also radioactive, uh, just like the other ones. So this one I'm getting around uh, like 56,000 counts per minute. And so it's a, it's a tiny bit more radioactive than the small one, but it's like big like the other one is. It's long. And it also has this tube right here that the other one doesn't. And so, um, yeah, here's like a little close-up shot of it so you can kind of see what this thing looks like. Yeah, but all this back here is, it's all radium. And it looks like the face of this, it looks like a little scuffed up, I'm hoping. <laughs> I don't think it's a actual radium dust on the front of it there. Um, uh, these gauges do uh, emit uh, radiation along with uh, radon gas uh, because radium uh, decays into uh, radon, which then decays into polonium and then into lead and then into, you know, a couple other forms of polonium and radioactive lead. And then uh, it will eventually become a stable element. But that uh, won't happen for some time because the half-life of radium is 1600 years. So um, it's going to be radioactive for some time, uh, you know, longer than uh, we'll be around, that's for sure. And so, um, but what the concern is, is that that radon, when it's emitted, uh, it's a gas, and so it will leak out of these uh, containers, you know, these gauges, and that radon then decays into a solid, and it can become contaminated on the outside. And so that's not a huge deal because usually just washing your hands is enough to decontaminate your hands or, or any other surface because that level of contamination is pretty light. The big problem is, is when these gauges aren't sealed correctly and the paint begins to flake off because then that paint can get everywhere. And if that paint that flakes off gets anywhere, that is a pretty big hazard because the radium in here is very radioactive like just like a tiny piece of it is very radioactive and the other problem is too is that if you were to like uh, ingest uh, radium like breathe it in or to just get on your hands put your hands in your mouth do something like that your body is going to mistake that radium for calcium because uh, radium and calcium share the same column on the periodic table and so they have a lot of the same uh, chemical char characteristics of that and so your body when it gets that in there thinks that it's calcium and so it actually replace a little bit of the calcium in your body with radium and so to see like the most extreme case of this happening would be to read the story about the radium girls the girls that would paint uh, dials or watch faces like this and they would actually put a uh, radium paint in their mouths because it'd be on their paintbrushes and they were told to sharpen their paintbrushes by putting it in their mouths and so they ingested lots of radium and to see the uh, you know that extreme effect that they had was uh uh, their jaws would deteriorate, their teeth would fall out, their bones would become radioactive and they would eventually die because uh, their bones are just constantly emitting radiation and destroying cells. And so that's a, that's a pretty big problem. The radiation that's coming off of these is kind of intense, to be honest with you. I mean, uh, you know, I don't plan on uh, sitting in front of these for uh, too long. And uh, when I'm done with this video, they're going to go into the safe uh, where I keep some of my most uh, radioactive stuff. Um, you could put these in a display case. I think it all depends on like if people sleep by where you're gonna put them uh, or if people are sitting right next to them because you gotta think that this radiation is just projecting out everywhere. Uh, they're at, they project a little bit more out of the front of the gauges here because there isn't as much material and they can pass through glass. The radiation can pass through glass a lot easier than it can the housing of these gauges. I mean, I'm still getting you know, still getting a considerable uh, amount of radiation off of these gauges through the housing. I'm getting around 14,000 uh, counts per minute. And, you know, that's, that's pretty good. So that's like showering up at my face right now. And, you know, that can affect you, you know. It, that type of uh, radiation is very penetrating that's coming off of here that's going through this housing and stuff like that. It's like a lot of gamma radiation, which is... Some of the worst, um, 
you know, alpha radiation that radium also emits can be very damaging as well. Uh, it all kind of depends on your exposure and how close you are to these objects. Because obviously the closer you are, the more intense that radiation becomes. Also, if they're sitting on your desk, that's um, another thing to be mindful of too. Because if they're in that close proximity of like, you know, sitting on the corner of your desk facing you, that's, that's a little too close for me. Um, that is a lot of radiation uh, to be exposed to, uh, you know, every day. And so that's just something to think about. Um, they are cool to have, but, um, you know, it's, uh, they are fairly radioactive. <laughs> All right, now that I went and talked a little bit about those radioluminescent turn bank indicators, I came out to this location near Ennis, Montana to shoot some time lapse of those indicators to see how they would glow under long exposure photography. This should be a pretty cool place to do it because it should be very dark at night and uh, should be able to do some really long exposures and hopefully I don't get blasted by any random headlights to ruin my shots. Hopefully it's just like steady all the way through. So let's see what happens. All right, it's just starting to get dark enough right now. So hopefully I'll be able to start my rig here in probably about like 20 minutes or so. Because even with this tiny bit of ambient light, it can still blow out the shot. So let's we'll see how these uh, radium gauges turn out. This is an example of radioluminescence. In here are two little vials of tritium and the glow because the radiation is interacting with a, a coating that's on the inside of the vials here. And tritium has a half-life of about 12 years. So I've had this for about two years. So in 10 years time, this will be half as bright as it is right now. Radium doesn't suffer from this. Radium's half-life is 1600 years. So when the radium in those gauges uh, begins to fade, the brightness of that, it's due to the radiation destroying the zinc sulfide crystals that the radium is mixed in with, and that's what causes it to glow. So this gets dim because of its short half-life, and radium gets dim because its radiation is so intense that it actually destroys <laughs> the part of the paint that causes it to glow.